Hi, I'm Jeff, and I'm an analytic trainer here at SAS. Today, we're gonna to talk about how to compare models in SAS. So what is model comparison? Well, to solve a business problem, most analysts and data scientists are gonna build several models, usually models of different algorithms, decision trees and tree-based models, neural networks, support vector machines, maybe even traditional regression models. So why build so many models to solve one business problem? Well, it's because there's not one model that's uniformly best. If there was, that's the only model anybody would ever use. So we don't know what model is gonna be best at the beginning of the process because the results are always data dependent. And that's what model comparison is, building lo having lots of models built and then picking the best or the champion model. Model comparison is closely related to model assessment when we're building a single model, but these concepts take place at different times in the analytic life cycle. So let's take a look at the analytic life cycle. The analytic life cycle starts with data, exploring the data, preparing your data, cleaning up your data, maybe creating new features in your data. The next phase of the analytic life cycle is discovery, where you're looking for patterns in the data. If you're building models, that's the part of the life cycle where you're actually building your models. And deployment is the final part of the analytic life cycle, and a lot of things happen there, but one of them is model comparison, having that final model, putting it into production, uh, assessing that model over time to make sure its performance is not being degraded. When we assess a single model, usually that occurs during the discovery phase of the analytic life cycle. Typically, we partition the data into training and validation. We use the training data to build the models and look for the patterns, but then we have the validation data to assess the models, to sort of optimize complexity. The models that we build on the training data, we don't want to be underfit to the data. We don't want them to be overfit to the data because we need the model to be generalizable to new data. So we use that validation data set to, to help us optimize the complexity of the individual models. And analysts often use statistical measures uh, and graphical tools to assess how the model is performing. But those are the same statistical measures and graphical tools that we use during model comparison which is gonna take place in the deployment part of the life cycle. We have several models from the discovery step, and then when we move to deployment, we need to somehow pick that champion model. So let's talk just a minute about some of the statistical measures that we might use during model comparison. The statistical measures are gonna depend on two things. Information about the target, namely the measurement level of your target. Is your target binary, where it takes on only two values? Maybe yes and no, purchase, not purchase. Maybe the target's categorical, where it can take on many levels. Maybe the target is numeric, which might be referred to as an interval measurement level. So the statistic that we might use to compare the models is gonna depend on the target measurement level but it's also gonna depend on the type of prediction that we're gonna make. Maybe we're interested in making a decision prediction. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna focus this conversation on binary targets because that's the type of target that many, maybe even most business problems deal with, the binary target. So if we've got a binary target and we're making decision predictions, maybe we're trying to predict fraud or not fraud. So with the decision, we're classifying each case into some outcome. Maybe a different type of prediction for a different business problem might be purchase or not purchase. Another type of prediction is a ranking, where basically we're just looking for a, a sorted ordering of the cases, kind of like a list of customers from most important down to least important. And I might also have an Estimation. Estimation prediction. And even though our binary target is gonna be one of only two outcomes, we can still estimate a numeric quantity, something that's interpretable, which would be a probability. Probabilities range between zero and one. 
They can take on any value there. A smaller probability means you're less likely to see the event of interest, and the higher the probability, the more likely you are to see the event of interest. And the reason this matters is because the statistical measure that you use to compare the models might be different depending on what prediction type you're gonna make. If I'm interested in decision predictions, I might use misclassification rate or KS statistic or profit or loss. If I'm interested in ranking predictions, I might use the area under the ROC curve or the Gini coefficient. And if I'm interested in estimation predictions, I might use something like average squared error, one of my personal favorites, or other likelihood-based statistics like AIC or BIC. Just a quick side note, if you've got a numeric target, your list of statistics is, is a lot smaller. A, a common assessment measure if you've got a numeric or interval target might just be average squared error. So let's talk about some of the, the graphical tools that we might use to compare models. Again, focusing on a binary target, one common graphical tool for comparing models or assessing their performance is the ROC chart. And the ROC chart is actually a unit square. It plots true positive rates against false positive rates. On the ROC chart, you've got your baseline or your naive model, which just cuts across at a 45 degree angle. And the ROC chart is based on different cutoffs in the data. And for any model that's performing well, you hope that its true positive rates are higher than its false positive rates. So usually as you plot curves for the ROC charts, the closer it's getting to that upper left-hand corner means the better the model's doing. And graphs are great because they're quick, they're easy. You can put a lot of models on one picture and you don't even need to know how the chart is constructed to gain information from it or to interpret the information that the chart's showing you. In addition to ROC charts, we might look at other charts which are based on the response rate. The response rate sort of tells you of, of all the people that you contact, how many are actually responding, of how many ads you send out, how many customers are actually making the purchase. And there's several charts that we can construct based on response rate. One that's very common to use is lift or cumulative lift. And these charts are a little bit different. You can get the, the depth or how, how deep you are down your list of customers on the horizontal axis and you get the response rate or lift, cumulative lift, plotted vertically. We'll, we'll st stick with cumulative lift. Lift tells you how much better your model is at capturing the events of interest compared to the random or naive model. So a lift of two means that you're capturing twice as many responders as using a naive model. And because we want a high lift or a high response rate, what we're looking for here is the higher up the line is on the plot, that's indicating the better performance of the model. The higher the lift, the higher the cumulative lift, the higher the response rate, the better the model. All right, let's turn to the computer and uh, take a look at some data, take a look at some models and, and do some model comparison on the computer. We're gonna use Model Studio, which is a point and click interface for running SAS VIA products. And Model Studio is based on the concept of a pipeline. That's how you're actually building your models. Pipelines are just structured workflows of analytic actions. So here's our data. We're gonna pretend that we work for a grocery store that's interested in selling organic products. And if you're interested in, in Working along with me, take a look at the, the link in the description. We've got a link there to the data set. Uh, we've got some background information, some demographic information about the customers, maybe variables about prior purchase habits. And we're interested in one binary target, whether or not the customer has purchased organic products in the past. And in Model Studio, in this case, I've already built some models for us. In fact, I've got two pipelines. We'll start here in pipeline one. Pipeline one is pretty straightforward. Didn't take a lot of time to build. It's based on a decision tree and two tree-based models, a forest and gradient boosting. 
These models are quick and easy to build because they don't require a lot of data preparation compared to other models you might build. We don't need to impute for missingness. These types of models select variables on their own, so I don't need to do anything external to select the variables. The nodes are gonna do it themselves. So let's take a look at comparing these models within this first pipeline. In model comparison, we can compare models, or I'm sorry, in Model Studio, we can compare models within a single pipeline. And later I'll show you how to compare models across several pipelines. So we've got the model comparison node. Let me take a look at the results. Now the computer can only use one piece of information to pick the champion model, but analysts, data scientists, they often make more of a holistic decision based on a lot of information. They might look at a lot of statistics, maybe a lot of graphical information and take a look at all the information that they have at their fingertips and make a decision based on all that they're seeing. Model Studio has a default statistic, which is the KS statistic that's used to pick the champion. So we see at the model comparison table right now that the gradient boosting model is the champion based on default KS. Maybe we want to use misclassification rate where smaller is better. And looking at the misclassification rates, it looks also like the gradient boosting model is, is the best of the three in this pipeline. Let me maximize that table and take a look at some other statistics. Maybe instead of looking at a decision prediction, maybe I would be interested in predicting a probability or an estimate, in which case I might look at average squared error. And if we look at average squared error, smaller is better. It looks like, again, the gradient boosting model has the smallest average squared error, so it looks like gradient boosting is best on that statistic. Maybe we're interested in ranks. Ranking predictions, I might look at the ROC index or area under the ROC curve where bigger is better. And it looks like the gradient boosting model again is the best based on area under the curve. It's got the biggest value there. So at least numerically what I'm looking at is, is it looks like the gradient boost, boosting model is really the best out of these based on most of the things I'm looking at on the numbers. Well, how about graphically? Let's look at some of the graphical results. And why don't we start with the response-based charts. In Model Studio, those are called the lift reports. We'll go ahead and, and focus on cumulative lift, again, a common graphical tool. And rather than looking at performance on all partitions, let's just focus on the validation partition. Each model is represented by one line here. And it looks like no matter what depth I'm at on the horizontal axis, I can even zoom in a little bit. It looks like no matter how deep I am in the data, it looks like that orange line is always on the top. It's always giving me the highest cumulative lift. And that orange line looks like it comes from the gradient boosting model. So based on cumulative lift, it looks like gradient boosting model is, is the best model throughout the entire data set. How about ROC? I'll maximize the ROC reports and focus on ROC. And again, let's just focus on the validation data. And we're seeing something similar here. Based on different cutoffs, no matter what cutoff I'm at, it looks like that orange line is always the one that's closest to that upper right hand, I'm sorry, upper left hand corner. And that orange line is again describing the performance of the gradient boosting model. So for in, the, in this first pipeline, whether I'm looking numerically, whether I'm looking graphically, it looks like there's an overwhelming winner from the first pipeline. It looks like the gradient boosting model. Let's take a look at the second pipeline. Maybe in the second pipeline, I've got a little bit more time to build the model, so I do a little bit more data preparation. We have a decision tree in this pipeline, two regression models and a neural network. And the regression models and the neural networks require more data preparation. So we've imputed to correct for missingness. I've even used a variable selection node to select variables before the neural network in one of the regression models. And let's do some model comparison in this pipeline. Remember, Model Studio is going to use KS by default to pick the champion. And in the model comparison table, it looks like the stepwise 
logistic regression models the champion based on KS. Again, bigger is better. But what about misclassification rate? What if I was interested in misclassification rate? Their smaller is better. And it actually looks like the decision tree has the smallest misclassification rate. What about some of the other statistics? I'll maximize that table. Let's look at good old average squared error. Again, smaller is better. And it looks like we've got two models that are tied on average squared error, the stepwise logistic regression and the forward logistic regression. What about area under the curve? Bigger is better there. Uh, there it looks like the second regression model, the forward logistic regression model is the best for area under the curve. So as we're looking numerically at things, there's not one clear winner from this pipeline. It kind of depends on what statistic I'm looking at. What about graphically? We'll start with cumulative lift just as before. And we'll focus just on the validation performance. And here, well, it looks like it depends on what depth we're at in terms of what line is on best. At some of these shallow depths, it looks like the green line is on top and then maybe the blue line is on top for a little bit. Then the orange line is on top, then the green is back on top. So based on cumulative lift, it does not seem that there's one obvious winner here. Sort of depending on where we're at in the data, one model might be better than the others for, for cumulative lift. How about ROC chart? And maybe you can anticipate what we're gonna see there. Let me maximize that, go to ROC, and focus on validation data. The ROC chart is measuring true positive versus false positive rates for different cutoffs. And I'm not seeing one line that is always on top of the others. For certain cutoffs, it looks like even the orange line might be on top for certain cutoffs, then the green line, then the blue line. Of course, there are four lines here. The regression models are performing similarly, but there are four lines, one for each model. So based on ROC performance, I, I'm not seeing one model that, that is, is really the clear winner. So what I'll do moving forward is use the model that Model Studio is suggesting based on KS, which is the stepwise logistic. But maybe here's where we go down to the boss's office. Hey boss, I've got a pipeline here and I've got four models that I, I'm not seeing a clear champion there when I'm comparing them. Maybe we might use interpretation. Maybe we wanna use one of the other models based on being more interpretable moving forward. That might be the decision tree. We can come back to that later, actually. Right now, we'll just move forward with stepwise logistic regression. So we've got a champion model from each of the pipelines, but in model studios, we can determine which is the champion of champions. Let's have our two champion models battle it out in model comparison. So here I'll go to the pipeline comparison tab. And at the top, we see our two champion models, even what pipelines they came from. Again, the computer's got to use only one piece of information, so it's using KS to pick the champion, which is the gradient boosting model. Now at the bottom right now, we're just seeing information just about gradient boosting model because that's the one that's selected. And, and a lot of this information would be the same information we saw from the pipeline that it came from. If I scroll down and looked at the lift reports, ROC reports, even the fit statistics, those would be the same as the values and the graphs that we could have seen earlier from, from the pipeline itself. Let's compare the two models. So I'm gonna select both models at the top and then I'll click compare. And now we're actually comparing the, the, the two champions head to head. Let's take a look at some of the fit statistics. Just be careful, this table gives training and validation. Say we're looking at average, we know that based on KS, we know that the gradient boosting model is better than the regression model because it's, it's what Model Studio picked. Average squared error, smaller is better, and it looks like 
The gradient boosting model has a smaller average squared error than the regression. How about area under the ROC curve? Bigger is better. And oh yeah, once again, it looks like the gradient boosting model is better than the regression model. So numerically, it's looking like the gradient boosting model is, is the more clear winner of these two. What about graphically? Let's start with cumulative lift and focus on validation data. And it looks like that teal green line is the one that has the highest cumulative lift, no matter what depth we're at in the data. And that line is for the gradient boosting model. So it looks like throughout the entire data set for, for cumulative lift, gradient boosting models seem superior compared to the stepwise logistic regression. Even though you might guess what we're going to see on ROC, let's take a look. I'll maximize the ROC reports, focus on ROC. And again, let's just focus on validation data. And once again, no matter what cutoff we're using, it looks like that teal green line is, is always giving us the better performance. So for true positive versus false positive rates, it looks like the gradient boosting model is the clear winner compared to logistic regression. So when we're comparing the champion of champions, it looks like the clear winner is gradient boosting. What's nice about Model Studio though, and what you might be interested in doing at some point when you're doing model comparison is bring a challenger in, into the competition. Remember when we went down to the boss's office and didn't have a clear winner from pipeline two, maybe the boss said, I like the decision tree because it's the most interpretable. You always got to keep the boss happy. So no problem. We can bring the decision tree uh, in as a challenger model. So I'll go back to that pipeline where the tree was. I'll add it as a challenger model. I'll go back to pipeline comparison. And again, based on default KS, the gradient boosting is still the champion model. If I selected all three, maybe I wanted to look for the overall champion from these three. I could compare the models. And uh, even though the decision tree is probably not going to be declared the overall champion, we've made the boss happy. And when the boss is happy, we're happy. So if you're interested in more tutorials, and if you like this one, subscribe to the channel, but check with your boss first to make sure you can watch YouTube videos at work. If you want more information on this topic, take a look at the links below, and please feel free to leave me a comment or ask me a question. That's it for now. Thanks a lot and see you later.